you find this thumbnail browsing through the slums of youtube.com. Ekva? What the hell is an Ekva? The curiosity quickly overwhelms you, and so you... This YouTube channel houses a deadly broadcast network, controlled by a company once thought to be shut down. Subliminal messages litter the videos. Strange cartoons, surveillance footage, system updates, things that make no sense at a first glance. But what does this network want, and why are their programs still running? This YouTube channel is called Ekvanet, with YouTube videos as old as six years to as recent as about six months ago. This channel houses videos with a mission to corrupt someone's life to mold them into something useful. But why? Why not start your new life today? This is how this is gonna work. This rabbit hole is deep. There are a lot of moving parts. So what you're gonna do is forgive me if I make a mistake, all right? All right, what's up internet 40301? Today we have more than just a weird YouTube channel. We have an entire rabbit hole ARG or ARG if you're a, a, a fucking pirate. This is one of those YouTube channels. Now, if you recognize the words Marble Hornets, then you're in luck because this is by the same creator. So expect this to be very complicated. Imagine being the one to make this video. I have not looked at another video about this and I have read no lore. I have not looked up anything because why would I do that? That's no fun. Over the past three weeks or so, we went from 17 subscribers to over 1,000. Pretty much off the back of my last video alone. I want to welcome everybody and thank you all for giving my channel a chance. And now, welcome to a blue screen appears on your TV with a loud distinctive tone. So many new things coming to your television set. A message to stay inside uh, and to see what's important. After, the broadcast goes black and a space for notes is shown, but it's blank. There are no notes. Silence. And then, a second broadcast springs to life. A commercial for an ECVA network career fair. ECVA is hiring. They promise competitive pay and challenging work. Which is just a nice way of saying that they're gonna work you to death. ECVA also promises health benefits and shows a bottle of pills. A red screen flashes by. Do what's important. The commercial lists a website for you to apply. You can visit this website. If you do, you're greeted with this application and an email to send it to. Now look, I know that we all could use a little extra cash, but I think you might want to pass up on this opportunity. The broadcast ends. But this time, there is a note. When was this? Someone is wondering when this broadcast took place. But who is the someone? A new broadcast. The word test fills the screen. Whatever this is, it's not ready to be broadcasted. Or it was never supposed to be broadcasted at all. Test number 452 for a program called Alice Pastry. A project from the children's program department. A children's show. It starts with this character that looks like it was drawn by a kindergartner. This is Alice. Alice is shown walking across this lined notebook paper, but then they seem to fall over. The program distorts. A strange tone plays, and Alice has something to say. Alice's speech is distorted beyond comprehension, but I was able to hear something they said. As for the rest, do you hear anything? Then, a slogan is shown on the screen. Why not start your new life today? A common saying that we will see again and again. But what do they mean by new life? The note at the end confirms that Alice Pastry was Ekva's concept for a children's show for their network, a SpongeBob for their Nickelodeon. The note taker writes that the slogan, why not start your new life today, sounds familiar, but they can't figure out why. Why are these notes even a thing? Is the question right now. A commercial plays for some sort of drug called preaxin. Life needs your full attention. There's no reason to give it any less. But sometimes things happen that are out of our control. That's why there's preaxin. So get back to the things that matter and ask your doctor for more information about preaxin. Preaxin. Why not start your new life? 
life today. This commercial skipped over all of the boring stuff, like explaining what preaxin is, who should be taking it, why people should be taking it, who cares about any of that? I want to know how it's going to ruin my life. The common side effects, nausea, dizziness, sleepwalking, sleep driving, hallucination, aggression, and more like sign me up like say no more like the note taker mentioned that they previously interviewed for a job at ECVA a long time ago back when ECVA was still operating they also mentioned that they were taking the preaxin drug around the time of the interview now we know that the person writing these notes was once associated with the ECVA network we also now know that ECVA is a dead network but if that's the case then why are these broadcasts still playing? A new broadcast. This shot of a house window with a bright light shining from within. You blink and a face appears in the window on some SCP-965 shit. The face just stares back and then... The broadcast cuts out. The note at the end reveals that an internet connection was cut. That's why the broadcast was cut short. An auto upload was cut short. The note taker says that they need to drive out there to see what happened. It's time for things to start making sense. Our note taker has arrived at a house. This is the out there they needed to drive to. This house is something they inherited a few years ago. They have no money to fix it up, so it remains in a decaying state. They just so happen to find out that this house is in the perfect spot to pick up the ECFA network broadcasts. Now, I'm not sure how they found that out. They said that they came to the house to clean it out when they found that out. Like, are they going around with a fucking antenna above their heads at all times just trying to see what they find? I don't know. They enter the house and for some reason they're wearing blue surgical gloves. So I'm going to take it upon myself to name our nameless note taker here, Blue Gloves. As Blue Gloves enters the house, we get a view of their simple setup sitting on the floor. A JVC portable TV and a Texan portable shortwave radio hooked up to a laptop sitting on a podium in the corner. This setup was made to receive ECFA broadcasts automatically record them and then automatically upload them to blue gloves computer back at home that's what we've been seeing we've been seeing the recorded broadcasts and blue gloves has been tagging notes to the end of each recording that's what we've been seeing blue gloves realizes that there's no power to their devices that's why the last broadcast was cut short the power to their system was cut they fix the faulty wire in the outlet and restore power Now the system should work fine again. So they leave. Mission accomplished. The mission was so well accomplished that they didn't even get home before another broadcast was recorded and uploaded. This is the broadcast. This user interface loads. The ECVA system begins refreshing its receiver list. The system detects a single unnamed receiver, Blue Gloves receiver. The only thing still receiving these broadcasts. Now the ECVA network begins to focus their programming. The network runs a program called brightest light are you sorry for leaving this is a targeted message ECVA a network once thought to be shut down is alive and running and now they know that their broadcasts are being received and it's only a matter of time before they find the receiver a new broadcast, a new episode of Alice Pastry. Alice goes to the doctor. We see Alice enter what is very clearly a doctor's office with this guy who is very clearly a doctor. Alice lays on the examination table and is shown that they have a spark in their head. When the doctor reaches for the spark, the doctor's diagnosis is that Alice does not see what's important, whatever that means. A house call is dispatched.
A house call is when a doctor comes to your home instead of the usual you going to the doctor's office. In the notes, Blue Gloves writes that they're certain that this cartoon is about them specifically, and it is. At the very beginning of this Alice Pastry episode, this page is shown saying, Episode 99.002, Alice Goes to TV. The rest is cut off. And before we're shown the episode Alice Goes to the Doctor, Alice is shown watching Alice Goes to the Doctor. Alice is representing Blue Gloves in this cartoon. This is Ekva's way of showing that they know that Blue Gloves is watching. Blue Gloves is the one that does not see what's important. But what does that even mean? Next, an ad shows up for drug testing trials in the area with paid participation. But then this image interrupts the ad. Alice is shown connected to the head of a human. Alice is also positioned over a TV. In this image, Alice represents the ECFA network controlling Blue Gloves. The human is turned away from the TV, symbolizing that Blue Gloves is oblivious to what's really happening. The broadcast was cut short again. Something has happened back at the old empty house. Time to go back. Back at the old empty house, Blue Gloves enters to check on their equipment. They don't notice right away, but their computer has been moved from the podium. They notice something about the outlet. They look and find some folded up paper lodged in the outlet. Yeah, that's not a fire hazard. They remove it and unfold it. It's an envelope. They open it up to find a note that says database 452 active. And on the back, you listen now. a knocking comes from deeper in the house. Someone's here. Or maybe it's nothing. Blue Gloves goes back to take one last look at the envelope. They missed something. They look again and find a white pill. Without much of a thought, they grab the contents of the envelope and leave the house in a hurry. Blue Gloves returns home. They hop on their computer to investigate the note they found, Database 452. They go to the ECVA.net website, brute force a password, and we see this page. Something called ARC Listener is online. A new broadcast has been recorded and uploaded. The broadcast shows this user interface, saying, Monitoring active, and again, the network runs brightest light and shows this screen saying house call complete we fell for it house call when the doctor comes to your home the quote-unquote doctor broke into the old empty house and per doctor's orders left a pill a pill that would allow blue gloves to finally see what's important blue gloves found the pill and took it home house call complete. And now, Blue Glove's old empty house has officially been compromised. A new broadcast, a new episode of Alice Pastry. Alice learns to listen. We can see Alice walking. They walk past a TV, a TV with the house call complete screen on it. Alice ignores it. This was a mistake. Alice is quickly met with this figure, with a head shaped like the ARC listener icon. It looks as if Alice is being scolded for ignoring the TV, ignoring the house call. The broadcast resets to something more calm. Another commercial for pre accent of course. The solution to all our problems. Listing all of its positive perks. Don't you want to see? Blue Gloves arrives in a parking lot. They walk over to a dumpster, and they discard the pre accent pill from the envelope. House call averted why they felt the need to drive all the way to their local elementary school and then drive around the back to the dumpster to throw away a pill is beyond my comprehension they must not own a trash can at home that's a tough life blue gloves trashing the pill is alice ignoring the tv this is the house call being ignored <laughs> A program called Quiet Bug Comes Home Plays. We see this human figure in front of a blue house, greeting this character, Quiet Bug, as they return home. But then we jump into the past to find out what led to Quiet Bug coming home. Alice is shown sitting in an empty room, watching an Alice Pastry episode, specifically the one we just saw. Alice learns to listen. All of a sudden, Alice freaks out. The ARC listener is shown looking into the house through a window. Alice looks back at it and then leaves. 
Now, although we see Quiet Bug for all of five seconds, I have reason to believe that Quiet Bug is just another character that Ekva has created to represent Blue Gloves. So now we have two representations of Blue Gloves, Alice and Quiet Bug. But why have two characters represent one person? This empty room represents the old empty house. And as soon as Blue Gloves notice that Ekva has been to the house, they freak out and return home, back to their normal self, the human figure. Arc listener loads up. Monitoring is still active, but the system detects a fault in the receiver. Something has happened. Blue Gloves decides to go back to the house to set up security countermeasures. Then they're gonna stay away. Which I don't know how they plan on securing that house. The thing is in the middle of nowhere. It's literally falling apart. The wood is rotting. The windows are broken. But do your thing, 21. Blue Gloves gets back to the house to secure it. They open the door and head inside. Something's happening. All the equipment? Gone. The laptop? Decapitated. With the E, C, K, V, and A keys missing. Subtle. I guess this is the fault in the receiver that Ekva detected. A knocking comes from deeper in the house. More aggressive than last time, Blue Gloves investigates. Blue Gloves slowly approaches. The knocking begins to sound different. The ECFA network tone. They open the door. But why can't you see what's important? Why not start your new life today? <laughs> This video is different. The other times we've been to the house, it's been footage directly from Blue Gloves' camera. It starts and then it ends, like any normal recording. But this video has the Ekva intro at the start. This recording was broadcasted by Ekva. But how? A new life begins. A new broadcast. Checking system for updates. If you listen closely as the update is installing, you can hear the last broadcast playing in the background. Blue Gloves camera footage. You can hear when the door falls over. The update is installed and the system restarts. Then it says retrieving layout data. Then the system shows us this. This is a map of the old empty house. Whoever broke into the house before has drawn a map of the entire house. But that's not what's crazy right now. Blue Gloves last encounter in the house and what we're seeing now are both happening at the same time. A movement detected alert shows up right when Blue Gloves enters that room. A camera feed is accessed. It shows this figure shambling into the room with the same posture as this thing that Blue Gloves saw, but it doesn't attack Blue Gloves. It falls over. The live feed cuts. The network runs its scheduled program. Another episode of Quiet Bug. Quiet Bug and the Brightest Light. Quiet Bug is seen floating until they stop and raise their hand. A blue glove. The glove flies off to reveal that their hand is glowing. Their face begins to crack to reveal their true self. Another broadcast. It shows some previously recorded dash cam footage of someone driving in the night. Then it cuts to two quiet bugs facing each other. Then one opens its eyes. Maybe, for some reason, this quiet bug. But why are there two quiet bugs? Next, we see two Alice pastries, one in the air and one on the ground. Why are there now two versions of each Blue Gloves is still alive, but clearly something has happened to them after seeing this thing. They struggle to their feet and leave the camera behind. You've noticed that the ECFA intro has gotten progressively worse in quality. Something called Blot Plays. Everything you need. Stay inside and watch your favorite program. Life is better at the touch of a button. Ekva has everything you need. We can see Blue Gloves shambling through the woods, clearly internally fighting something and losing. They fall over. The broadcast cuts to an old message log between an S. Hawkins 1928 and an A. Raymond 4848. I sent you the missing footage. Great, thanks. No problem.
I have a quick question before you leave if you're not in a hurry. Okay. Is anything besides footage stored in the archive? I don't think so. Why? I found an old computer program stored in it. That's strange. Does ARC Listener sound familiar at all? Nope. Tell Danielle about it, I guess. I will. To you all, this probably doesn't seem like much of anything, but I know that Raymond lied. When Hawkins asks Raymond about ARC Listener, Raymond plays dumb and pretends to never have heard of it. However, deep in the archives of the ECFA.net website, there are multiple printed and scanned logs that show Raymond logging directly into an older version of ARC Listener during their time as an ECFA employee. Why did Raymond just lie to Hawkins? Arc Listener, aka Database 452, is the same database that Blue Gloves found written on that note from the outlet. Hawkins is the one who asked about Arc Listener. Blue Gloves is Hawkins. And Raymond is their former ECVA co-worker, specifically the one who recommended them for the position that they had, a position on the archiving team. Why they choose not to keep in contact through more reasonable means like, I don't know, a fucking cell phone number? is beyond my cognitive power. But now the question is, what is ARC Listener? Things are getting worse. Blue Gloves, now Hawkins, is shown logging into an instant messenger called Mezzanine Messenger. This is what ECVA employees use to communicate. Then, Hawkins is shown getting up from the ground, picking up their radio, going to the sink, and revealing something on their this broadcast is like none other before. Have you noticed that we are now seeing both of Hawkins' hands? There is no handheld camera. We are seeing directly from Hawkins' point of view. Whatever happened to Hawkins after they saw this has now made them one with this. And now, Ekva is able to broadcast directly from Hawkins' eyes. We are no longer catching the broadcast. We are the broadcast. Hawkins logs into Mezzanine Messenger, but a warning appears to tell them that their account is not approved and will be removed in the next system purge. This makes sense because Hawkins is no longer an ECVA employee. Hawkins bypasses the warning. We can see Raymond is currently online. The broadcast cuts to Hawkins revealing this spot on their arm. Something on the radio. You are the last repeats over and over. Hawkins leaves the house in a hurry. The last what? In the messages, Hawkins inquires about Arc Listener once again, but something, something has happened to Raymond. Can you help me find the brightest light? The system purge happens in the middle of their conversation. Their mezzanine messenger accounts are now gone forever. The spot on Hawkins' arm is spreading back again. Another ECVA program. This box with a face. A human figure kneels down to Quietbug, unscrewing their head to reveal Alice speaking gibberish. Another update to the network is detected, installed, and the network restarts. The system restores, and the map of the old empty house is shown. This time, we're adding a new source. The new source is added, but this isn't a map of the old empty house. In the notes, Hawkins confirms that this is a map of their home, the one they actually live in. The cluster of pluses represents the detection of movement. It looks like Hawkins finally made it home. Or maybe it's a cat. Who the fuck knows? Again, another episode of Alice Pastry. Alice Pastry gets better. This happy box sits on the floor. Alice is seen carrying the head of another Alice decapitated from before. Alice is taking it somewhere when... The doctor. One Alice is freaking out, while the other seems to have no clue what's happening. The doctor very calmly suggests that just that takes the fucking pre-action pill. Alice takes the pill. But why is Alice doing it? What kind of fucking serial killer behavior? Alice takes the pill. All better. The broadcast cuts to a live camera feed of what looks like someone's house driveway. Then the broadcast starts up. 
migration process? Through what looks like Hawkins' new eyes, we are shown that they're walking towards an unknown house in the woods. The cartoon shows Alice bursting from the blue house, pre and filling their veins. They leave, and the box comes with. I have no idea what this box is supposed to be. This blue house is the same house that Quiet Bug returned to in Quiet Bug Comes Home. The blue house represents Hawkins' home. The Ekva signals are no longer at the old empty house. Hawkins' arm is almost fully covered in the spot from before. Arc listener loads. It tests a connection. It connects to the dash cam of a moving car. Hawkins' car, as they migrate. At least that's what I think. Back again. Take notice that the Ekva intro is no longer blue. A still image of the dash cam footage from before. An error fills the screen. Quiet Bug is dead. Whatever this is, is shown. A brand new program called Andy Auger Cat plays. Auger Cat? Auger Cat? I, I don't fucking know. I'm just gonna say Auger Cat. A human figure stands and is approached by Andy Auger Cat. And then... Someone wakes up in an unfinished house. They stand and they look around. They approach the brightest light in the room. They look down and... Quiet Bug is not dead. It's just shed its skin. It's Hawkins. But how did they end up here? They look around the house. A sound comes from the basement. And Hawkins does the smartest thing I've ever seen and leaves the fucking house. Legendary. Remember the Quiet Bug episode, Quiet Bug and the Brightest Light? Where Quiet Bug, who represents Hawkins, reaches up, and when the blue glove is removed, their hand is glowing. This is the brightest light. And remember when the broadcast was doing its migration process, and the broadcast showed Hawkins shambling towards the house in the woods? This is that house. Hawkins is the signal that is no longer at the old empty house. Hawkins is the broadcast that has migrated. Ekva now has full control of Hawkins. Or maybe I'm crazy. I should probably just take my meds, stay inside, and watch TV. Why not start your new life today? Still alive? Good! The last video was from about six months ago, and I have a feeling that this series is far from over. A lot of questions unanswered, a lot of theorizing. Again, I've not watched another video on this, and I've not looked up any lore. There's probably going to be a lot more videos added to this series, so I'm going to keep an eye on it. Everything is linked down below. I'm done.